All right. So going through new model tutorial got syntax error. Okay. Um, and it is the 27th. <clears throat> okay, Yash, do you have anything you wanted to talk about today? Yeah, I tried the Windows installation again and like debugged it a bit, saw some things, and it's working fine now. Actually, for Wobble Rabbit and uh, Auto Escalon, it was the dependency issue. Okay. It needs some external dependencies for Windows, like CMake and everything. You have to install it. Yeah. Separately. Uh, CMake, Swig. Swig is a tool. I, I haven't used it before. I just okay. installed it for that right now. And another tool I don't remember for Auto Escalon. There were two dependencies. Like the error message was quite good and quite helpful. So okay. I don't think it would be an issue later. Okay. Is that is that? And, do you mean the error message that we put in that says you need to install CMake and Swig and stuff, or was yeah. there a different? Okay, good. Yeah. I'm glad that was yeah. helpful. So, so that is working fine now. I haven't tried installing all the dependencies and yet I'll I'll try that soon. Okay. Uh, but. Where it was failing was it wasn't able to find torch at pip as we discussed last time. Okay. And the reason I found out was that to install torch, the command has now changed. You have to add a string in front of the install command to install it. <clears throat> ah, okay. I'll, I'll just share the link just a second. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's see. So is that is that pretty much it on the Windows front right now, or do you want to talk more about it? Um, or should we? Yeah, I, I, I wanted to ask, like, what command do you use to run the test? Ah, um, right now, I believe, so this is going to have to change with Python 3.9, but, but right now, um, uh, to run the tests, uh, what command do we use to run the tests? Um, and it should just be Python setup.py test. Um, so, yeah, that... And then you can, you know, you can select one by doing dash s and then test dot whatever the test is. Um, but that should be in um, that should be in the uh, testing. Let's see, it should be here. Um, was that not working? Uh, it has never failed for me, honestly. I tried it last week too, but I rebased with Mar master and ran this command after reinstalling everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting a weird error. Weird error. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to fix Like, It's mm -hmm. not helpful. It, it's something yeah. with Python. I don't know. And when I when I ran when I ran Python setup.py unit test, the test ran. Mm -hmm. And but the log for test is better when you use Python setup.py setup.py test uh, instead of Python setup.py unit test. Yeah, yeah. So I was wondering, like, you have an idea? You might have an idea. Of yeah, let's it. let's check it out. Um, uh, I share yeah. the link for the PyTorch thing. Like okay, great. Let me put that command in. Command you have to run. Okay, we'll we'll jump over and we'll run through the model stuff first, and then we'll check that out. Um, so, okay, um, where did let's say okay, yeah, there's that link. Okay, so it's basically this anaconda command first. Or, or you select. Can you select Windows from it? Yeah, Windows. Okay. Pip, Windows, and then pip. Yeah. We use pip, right? Yeah. So oh, you is this it? Right. Yeah. If you just run pip install torch or torch vision, it says that the 
file wasn't found. Okay. okay. Yeah. The packet wasn't. Found. Okay. And it's probably that dash F that's interesting. I haven't seen that, so. Um, it's like one gigabyte, so it downloads every, yeah. every <laughs> other package I've had. Oh, God. Um, interesting. Okay. I haven't seen that dash F option before. I'm curious about that. Um, find links. Oh, cool. Parse the links to archives. Okay. Interesting. Um, okay. <clears throat> Okay. All right, we'll figure out how to address that then. Um, so uh, could you make an issue about that, Yash? Because I think that's uh, we'll make it lost if we don't. Oh, the PyTorch install command. Yeah, just, you know, something that says we need to address that. Okay. Thanks. All right. Um, okay, so... All right, so uh, Shaw, let's let's look at this. Uh, so Yash, is that pretty much all? Or okay, we're gonna take a look at the error. Um, but um, let's see, error when running tests. We'll take a look at the error, but let's jump over to the model tutorial for now. Um, okay, so what? Can you share your screen with us, Shaw, or share the error message or something? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think I'll present my screen. Just okay. give me a minute. Yeah. So when basically when I try to update setup dot py, this is the error I get every time I've tried that, it's like three, four times now, but. Uh, okay. This oh. is the error I get. All right, let's see. see. So dash E, okay, it looks like, let's just look in that file real quick because I'm guessing, let's see. Yeah, let's look in that file real quick or open that file with your text editor. Also, actually, real quick, do python dash dash version. Can you run that command? All right. Yeah. Ah, see, ah, there we go. Python 2. Point, um, uh, so you're on Python 2.7. So we'll need to make sure we're running all of this stuff with Python 3. Um, Try Python 3. Set up Python. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, let's... okay. So, uh, yeah. So I have Python. Uh, I have Python three point seven installed. So, 
so yeah, so let's try running Python 3. And actually, this is one of the changes I'm just making to the model tutorial. So, or to all the tutorials is is that sometimes when we run pip, it runs the wrong version of, of pip. Um, so if we run it as Python, so prepend to this command. So go to the very beginning of this command and try Python. So so should I do this? It's well, so really... here, so that that also can be prone to error. So the one thing that always works is if we go all the way to the front and we just do do Python three dash m and then whatever the pip command is. So Python three dash m pip install dash e dot, and that usually grabs the right um, version of things. Uh, sorry, Python three dash m. Oh, my bad. No worries. Yeah, this is, I'm just, let's see, set of common has no attribute. Oh, I see. Um, I think what we wanted here was uh, 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 that uh, should still stay all caps import package name. Because um, that's a that's a variable that we're that we're using there instead of, um, I think, I think you replaced. Um, so yeah, if you look so at the, yeah, basically. Yeah, so do I keep this all caps? Or... Yeah, keep that all caps import package name. And what you wanted to do is you wanted to change the MISC model to be named. Um, so all caps import underscore package name, I believe. This or, said something like oh, this. Oh, import audio. name. Yeah, import and, name. Yeah. And that's the class and name. what do I change? So that uh, the thing following the colon. So MISC model. So we need to make sure we oh, clear this so up. Oh, so that. Yeah, change that. So let's see. Um, let me make sure that we clear this up here. Cool. So yeah, it worked. All right, great. That's great. Now I'm just going to check the tutorial here and make sure that that got cleared up because I made some edits recently and I want to make sure that that is is uh, clear because I think that changed since, uh, okay. I think we, we have captured that in the new version of the tutorial here. So um, let's see. Um, let's see, let me just, okay, great. All right, so, and then let's see. So uh, issue, so let me just document this here and I'll, I'll present again. So yeah, this is some of the stuff that I'm trying to catch as we're going through automating the new, the testing of the tutorials, which is what I'm currently working on. Um, so, so issue <clears throat> installing um, package um, due to dash F uh, format string syntax error uh, so we were running Python two. Um, so let's see, we need to make sure this is something we don't have, but we need to make sure, um, that users check their version of Python, um, within the installation docs. Um, cause that's probably, I know that we have in the installation here, we say supports 3.7 and 3.8. Um, but okay. I guess we have Python three here, so maybe that's, that's probably good enough. Um, and then I'm thinking, yeah, we need basically just, we need to make sure that Python three gets run places. Um, so let me make sure that you check your put or that we always specify Python three. Um, yeah. And actually, yeah. Okay. So I'm just, I'm going back and forth on that because I think, um, there was, I noticed sometimes as I was going through and, and doing this, that sometimes if you specify Python, if you have multiple versions of Python three and you specify Python three, then it gives you the wrong one. So I'm trying to figure this out as I, as we, as we get the tutorials tested right now, but we'll, we'll make sure we address that. And then we also ran into, okay. Yeah. Um, it was the um, naming. So uh, we need to, to make sure that uh, naming or 
that the changes to the um, setup.py file are clear on what we're changing and why. Because um, yeah, obviously that I don't think don't think that's explained quite well enough there. Um, uh, actually, it I found it to be pretty straightforward. There was okay. just like a couple of places where I found it to be a bit ambiguous, but other yeah. that it was pretty simple. Yeah. Okay, cool. Did you do you happen to remember what those are? Or where yeah, those... yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I went through this yesterday only, so like. The places where it says that you will like we're creating a simple linear regression model, right? Mm -hmm. So, which where are we looking here? Just so I can make sure that I'm I know which page we were looking at because this has also changed a little bit. So, which which one of these were we on? Yeah, uh, the new model tutorial. Uh, the okay. first the first thing that opens up as soon as you click that. Okay. Um, and was this way? Was this on the? Um, let's see. This is. Was this on the page that was the latest released version here? Or was it the master documentation? Okay. It was this uh, guy. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. So, yeah, over here. Yeah, because. The instructions are fine. As long okay. as someone reads the instruction, it's going to be fine. Yeah. The instructions and the code are sometimes contradictory. Oh, yeah. That creates a bit of confusion. Okay. Um, so let's, I'll make a note to rerun through this. So I, I, we have split this tutorial has now been split into sort of three different tutorials at this point. Um, so that maybe will clear things up, but I'll make sure that I note that we need to run through back and make sure that the instructions in the code are match up. So instructions and code don't are contradictory in some places. Uh, we need to make uh, sure. Just one more thing. Yeah. I'm running the uh the test file and it says error while finding module specification for setup.py uh let's see can you share the screen real quick yeah absolutely hey saksham how's it going uh, hey john it's going great how about you it's going well Uh, right. So I tried re. Yeah. Oh, uh, don't. Okay, this time. So this time, don't run with dash m. Um, so dash m says run, run this, run the next, whatever the next argument is as a module. Um, and so you can do that for installed modules, or if you have like a directory. Um, in your current working directory that contains an init py, then it'll run that as if it's an installed module. So yeah, just run it without the dash m. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, so well. <laughs> so something is supposed to happen here, right? Yes. Because I've written. Well, we've got the test file written somewhere. I think. Hmm. Uh, oh, I see. There's a missing call to uh, setup at the end of this. So there should be a call to the uh, setup. Um, so the uh, so check out the open that file. Um, and this is one of the things where we have this. So we have the setup common file and we have setup. And setup common contains some sort of like common stuff that well, it contains some stuff that so basically whenever you there's different kinds of plugins that you can create you can create a model or a source or operations or services and so all of those things have several some uh, some similarities to them and basically that's why we throw in this setup common file when we do the dfml service dev create you know whatever kind of plugin type you want to create um but 
Uh, that is less than clear, um, sort of because the, the standard way to do things is to have everything in that setup py. So we're going to change that in the future, but for now we end up with this this situation where we have a setup py and a setup common py. So you'll notice when you, if you open the setup py um, file, so if yeah. you open that up, you'll notice that we have that this this little blob, the boilerplate to load commonalities, um, and that basically does a it allow we we import directly from that file in the same directory as this file, um, which and so now we end up with this um, you know the setup common imported as a module named common, um, so that's how we're getting access to the setup kw arc. So now we need to basically what we need to do is we need to call that setup tools setup. So from setup tools import setup at the top there, we need to call setup and we need to pass it the keyword arguments um, from common. So just so at the bottom of the file, call the setup function and uh, within the parentheses to the call to setup, do star star common dot kw args. And what that does is it'll do uh, it'll do the uh, keyword argument expansion um, and basically call the setup function. So let's see. So something like this and so the parentheses. So the so call the the setup function. So you actually want to so make a call to setups. Um, so let's let's forget about this line right now for for a second. Um, so basically okay. what or yeah just just that line. So just make a call to call the function named setup. So just set up open parentheses, close parentheses. Okay. And so that function it. on the third line of this file, you're so setup tools from setup tools, we're importing this setup function. And uh, so let me, let me actually also write a note that we need to add some more explanation around this. Um, so explain setup file. Right. Um, so this, set up so we still have one more thing we need to do here um okay uh, all right okay um so now we need to pass to setup we need to pass it all of these uh keyword arguments um are you familiar with keyword arguments um so like the basically when you call you know how you, when you call a function sometimes and it'll have you pass you know you have some things that are positionals and then you'll have some things where it says you know this string equals this other thing right this variable right yeah, yeah so those are keyword yep. arguments um and what we can do is we can take a dictionary and we can use a dictionary since a dictionary is a key value mapping of, you know, usually strings to values. Um, we can take a dictionary and we can use it as the um, keyword arguments to any function by doing uh, what's called keyword argument expansion. Um, and so to do expansion, there's a special um, syntax for it, which is star star and then the dictionary. And so we have a dictionary called common.kwargs. And so what we'll do is we'll oh. do star star common.kwargs. Yeah. And now that, that calls the setup function passing all of the keyword arguments from that from that kwargs dictionary. And this is something now that I've seen I've seen many times that this is uh, this is uh, this is, you know, so this is this is something that, that you'll see, but I'm I'm I have become aware that I became very used to it, and I think a lot of us have come very used to it, but it's not something that everyone knows, and it's not something we should probably be, be doing right off the bat here, um, because it does not, um, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not intuitive if you haven't seen it, um, so we'll, we'll want to change that. Yeah. Uh, As once you explain it, it seems fairly intuitive, but yeah not something yeah yeah like rent yeah the the importing using import lib with a specific file and uh and the keyword argument expansion are pretty not commonly seen things so there is one we do have a problem here um because um i 
think I'm seeing that you're using Python 3.6, which is does not have data classes. Um, so that that's a problem. So we we need to have we need to be on Python 3.7 or 3.8 um, to 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 use DFFML. Okay. Yeah, because there's basically the data classes is a big thing that got added in 3.7, and then also there's something called a, a, a all of the async and await stuff. Um, there was some some important features that got added around async and await in 3.7 too. So that's basically why we ended up choosing 3.7 as, as the lowest version that we're, we're supporting. Um, so you can install if you're on, what kind of version, what version of Ubuntu are you on? Uh, I think 18 point something, I'm not sure. All right, I think we have, let's see, let's check the installation instructions here, but I think, Yes. Okay. So you should just be able to do um, uh, Pyth apt-get install Python 3.7, um, and you should end up with Python 3.7. I think I'm seeing things. Yeah. So uh... let's see. Yeah. Okay, so, oh, okay, so yeah, just, so then when you're running Python 3, just make sure you're running Python 3.7. So, do I write 3.7 here or something? Yeah, just write 3.7 there, yeah. Uh... Yeah, that's the okay. that's the warning that that I was saying we're going to need to to change the way that we're running the tests um, to Yash earlier because that in three point nine they're so what rid what of that. what is actually suggested here like they are in, uh, yeah I read through the whole thread and everything and it's a mess um, but basically they they were yeah okay so I I'm thinking we may just move to running the unit test module let's see. Um, cannot import name config from DFFML. Let's see. Uh, okay, so yeah, and what were your... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Uh, tutorials, models. Mm, new model. Okay, this is... Cannot import name config from DFFML. Now this is a new one. Um, let's see. Well, it looks like so you have DFFML checked out there. Um, so where do you have DFFML? So let's see, DFFML, DFFML. Okay. And let's see. So uh, okay. So can you, okay, so I see that your path here at the top of this, it looks like you're in home, spur, DFFML, DFFML, DFFML model, MySLR. Um, so you, it looks like, okay, so you, you created this directory under the DFFML directory. Um, yep. And... And let's see. Okay, so let's just sort of navigate. Let's navigate to that that top level directory. Um, so yeah. So this is the main DFFML directory, I think. Uh huh. Yes. So yeah. And then in here, and then within here, you created this. Okay. So I think yeah. The main yeah, thing is we need to move this out of here. Um. And 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 okay. So. Okay. Um, all right. So the reason why this is is it's getting confused, is because when you import DFFML, it exposes. Okay, there's some more trickery here. Um, it exposes everything within DFFML. So everything within DFFML has a unique name, um, and so you can like you you may have seen this um but sometimes you'll import things by being like you know uh from dffml.util.net import whatever right and yeah. so yeah so what happens is to avoid having to do that 
we basically export everything from from the top. Um, so so if you you can import from DFML, you can import everything without doing the dot 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 because or else it sort of gets you know out of hand. Um, now this may not be the best course of action, but um, we may want to get rid of this. But that's the reason why you're seeing this is because you created the folder within that directory and when oh, i get i get what happened yeah so the problem is that i created another dfml directory within the dfml directory and that's where it's causing problems yeah so it's trying to go because as soon as you import dffml it says okay go to the top of the dffml directory and now find every single python file in there and export every unique class name oh. and since we're in that directory it's it's gonna it's gonna end up exporting it and so yeah so this is something that we maybe want to i don't know what what does everybody think about this because at first i was thinking uh it really you know it it sort of makes the i the, believe the reason why i did this initially was uh when we were all working on um adding examples to the api documentation it made things look a lot cleaner to just import from one place um now that may not be warrant it may not be the best reason to do this though um so yeah um i don't know does do, do people think that this is a nice convenience to be able to import whatever from the top level module or is it sort of not really necessary isn't this what generally people do in modules like i have seen a lot of libraries using similar structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You mean, what do you mean? Like to export from the top level or to export from the lower levels? From the top level. So okay. what, like you are talking about this DFFML, like all, all the stuff, helpful stuff, the backend stuff that you have extracted outside, right? Yeah. So, so basically, importing it directly from dffml is more convenient or we should write it where we need this is like what the point is yeah yeah well and that's that's sort of what i'm saying is i think i'm you know i'm sort of of that mindset which is why i put the work in to do this initially is that you know i feel like a I lot of actually like the structure a lot honestly you... i have admired it from the beginning you like i never had problems for problems with imports or exports anything okay well that's that's good that's good you mean you mean you didn't have a problem with doing dot net and dot util and you know all of that yeah okay yeah, this this is more convenient but uh, i still have to move all of this stuff right yeah you just you just have to move the dffml model my slr um out of that directory yeah, just yeah. As long as it's not within this directory right now, it, yeah, it can be within this directory even, but it probably should go in its own directory, um, not here either. Um, just because this um, is your main source tree for DFFML, and you don't want to accidentally sort of add that project. You know, this is sort of like we created a new project, um, and so we we use we would probably want to store it somewhere else, um, but it will work there. Um, cool. Okay, so we'll put, you know, we'll we'll say. Um, uh, uh, John, once like, a yeah. second, like I am, I am lost here. Like, why weren't we supposed to have that models directory in models? Okay, model so. Folder. Um. Okay, so, so I can I can. I haven't made a model for a while now, and what when I when I used to create models it usually made a for folder under model and then i had this folder DFS yeah so model. you you would want to yeah so so basically okay and, and yeah so let me let me sort of reset here for a second so when we create a new model um when we create a new model what we did was we ran this dffml service dev create model and then we we have a new directory containing a model right and now if we want to add that model to DFFML, what we what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to put it within the model directory. Um, yeah, we want to get rid of those uh, curly brackets there. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and this is something that that is captured now within the new tutorials. 
Um, so let's see. Go, go, um, master. Um, let me just make sure that that is correct. Um, so packaging model. So yeah, at the end of the new packaging, so if you go on the master docs and you look at the, the packaging tutorial um, for models, it's it mentions that basically, you know, we've we have this directory with our package model right that we can export and 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 give you know we can upload that to PyPy and other people can use our model but if we wanted to add that model to dffml the way that and the way that the dffml source the git source that we're all working on is structured is that we have the um we have whatever plugins if you look at the top level there's directories like model service uh source um and and then within the dffml directory there are um other there's directories like model service source right and so there's the dffml package itself right which is from the root of our git tree um and let me maybe show i'll show some of this stuff um aren't those like plugins that are outside of the main exactly uh, yeah exactly um um, oh, so, can, if anyone wants to write custom plugins, they can publish yeah. a package. For yes. Only. Yeah, exactly. So you can. Not so different. yeah. So so if you wanted to, um, so if you wanted to, right. So you're basically, and this, I think the new the new tutorials do a little bit better job at this, and we can sort of run. Look, let me let me yeah, sort of run I, through I, them. I, here. I just went through them. Okay. They're, they're pretty nice. Okay, good. So, and I'll I'll, t I'll take another look at them. But basically, it's it start now starts like okay, how would we use a model, right? And and we basically do the Iris stuff from TensorFlow, and we write a little Python file, and we and we run through you know the command line usage, um, and then we go to how do you write a model, and then we just focus on you know the one, um, you know the one file that that misc.py and editing that. Um, and so I think you want to do, I think you ended up all the way in your root directory. Uh, you want to go to your home directory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, and then we go and we, we talk about, um, you know, yeah. So we're talking about how do we write this model that does, uh, I think it was, yeah, simple linear regression, right? Um, and we do the train, yeah. accuracy, predict, um, and then we show how to use it. And then we, oh yeah, we do the HTTP server. And then finally we go to packaging. And then when we go to packaging, then we start addressing the pip install stuff and the and the testing. Um, and then at the very end of packaging, um, oh yeah, and we show how. And this is sort of the main reason why packaging matters is because now we can reference it um, by you know whatever tagline we we whatever whatever the entry point name was we did in setup.py we can reference it by that. So we call it my SLR. Um, which is that my SLR equals, you know, whatever. Um, so then the very final thing is we talk about uploading to PyPy. And so if you upload to PyPy, then now anybody could go and install your package, right? And you don't have to maintain your package as if it's, you know, another package within, um, you know, you don't have to contribute it to DFFML source if you don't want to, right? Um, because, you know, obviously we will make you write tests and we will make you do X, Y, Z and document it. And you may not feel like doing that, um, but you may want to let somebody else use it anyways. Right. Um, and so yep. that's, and so then, then what we, and I think there's a little note here. Yeah. There's a little note at the bottom and it says, so if you want to contribute this to the DFFML source code, then you need to, to, to take that to place the top level directory, which is the one you created, that DFFML, that hyphen model, hyphen my SLR, into model slash SLR within the DFFML source tree. And then you submit a pro request is, is what the little note says. And so the, and that's what we're talking about where that is where we maintain. So within the root of our source tree, we maintain a set of plugins that don't get installed when you ins so when you install dffml it installs all the stuff in the dffml directory but if you install you know dffml hyphen model hyphen tensorflow then it'll install the stuff in model slash tensorflow um, and that's sort of that's how everything is structured to maintain the plugins with the rest of the the stuff Okay, yeah. Oh, it's because you haven't removed that directory yet, maybe. 
I think you need to RMRF whatever I is think I did. in there. As long as, uh, as long as I remember the we use plugins when there are extra uh, when we have extra dependencies that we don't want in the yeah manufacturing. exactly exactly and so I think this is something that we also probably you know this is kind of a thing that needs to get documented here so um, uh, we need to explain. And I don't know, this might be good in the contributing documentation, or where might this be good? All right, we'll put it in the contributing documentation. We'll move it later if need be. So let's see. Yeah, I would RMRF um, uh, from this path. It's uh, DFFML slash DFFML hyphen model hyphen my SLR. And then do slash. You are in that directory. You have to cd dot dot first. Uh, no, I think I... he's good because he's in C home spur DFFML. Oh, he's DFFML. removing that. Yeah, and then do hyphen. Try doing a tab there. Nope. Uh, so, dude, give it a tab, tab, and see what happens. Uh, what the? Wait, okay. Tab? Let's. Yeah, if you do tab, it'll do autocomplete. Do an LS and see what's going on here. Uh, oh, yeah, no, you do. You're right. Yash is right. You have to CD dot dot. Yeah, no, you're right, Yash. All right, so what do I do now? Do CD. You have to CD dot dot. Yeah. CD dot dot. Uh, space dot, right. dot. Oh, it's been a while since I've done this. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. And now run that RM. And so, but do, do, so do tab here. Hit tab. Um, yeah, okay. So now that's, that's showing you what's there, right? So now if you do slash. So you type slash. Now hit tab, tab. And it'll show you all the stuff there. Yeah, so now you can see, and that sort of it's it tab will do an auto complete if it finds it. So you can do dffml hyphen and then hit tab, and it'll auto complete the rest of it. All right. So or wait, wait, not so that one. You want to do? You not need that to, one. Yeah, you need not to start typing first. So you need it because we're looking to remove. Um, you know, yeah. So do dffml slash, and then now, yeah, if you start typing and you hit tab, it'll give you the that one. Yeah. And then this remove one. the whole directory. So. Oh yeah, might as well remove it. Yeah, yeah. All right, great. Now oh, this right. this should give us. Yeah, this should hopefully work. I'll reinstall yeah, setup. Re well, so this will install DFFML. Yeah, and then you need to now you can run the tests. So now you need to CD. Setup. So this will run the tests for the main package. Um, so this is the Git repo. This is Intel slash DFFML that you're about to run the tests for. So you want to go into oh, yeah. that. Not yeah. That. Yeah, you want to yeah. do CD DFFML model SLR. Oh, wait. Yeah, the other thing I was thinking is it would be really good if we made some of those Google code lab uh, Python notebooks things because that that would probably be um, you know that that is less environment set up <laughs> yeah I think that's a great idea we can do that because many people use that Google yeah. collab because uh, in my case also I'm using like GCP yeah but if there is like if there was a tutorial for Google Collab, then I would have used that because many times the machine is not up to the par. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay, you got the test working. Yeah. Yay. So, uh, so this is basically, yeah, I'm happy about this. So this is basically the template uh, for every new model that I create, right? Yes, yeah. So that's 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 generally, and if you look in, so if you look in the the main source directory, um, and maybe here, let me go on GitHub and show this. But so if you look, 
so this is our this is our you know the the root of our source right so the top level directory of our our source code and so if we look in you'll you'll notice like so we have dffml here right and this is the main package and so within dffml we have like model service source operation um, and those are all you know plugins but these are the ones that are that come as with the main package. So these are the plugins that come installed with the main package. And now if you look in the top level of our source tree, right, here's the main package. Here's things that, that come as extras as their own packages, right? So we've got model, we've got operations, we've got service, and you see the HTTP service and then MySQL source, right? And so this is DFFML hyphen source hyphen MySQL. This is DFFML hyphen service hyphen HTTP. And if you come in here to the model directory, you'll see, you know, this is sort of the naming convention is based on, um, you know, what it, what is the name of the library that we're wrapping? Because usually we're wrapping some library and exposing it within, you know, our DFFML way um, to provide access to it, you know. Um, um, and so if you came in here and you wanted to look at, like, uh, let's see, we can look at uh, Dal for Pi is pretty pretty good one to look at. And so, um, so if you come in here, you'll notice this is a similar, this, this looks like, the directory structure that you saw um, when you created that that plugin, right? When you ran DFML service dev create uh, DFML model myslr, you got a similar directory yeah. structure in all these files. And so then, if you go in here, you'll you'll see that okay, so you had misc.py and misc.py is sort of just like a mis misc is short for miscellaneous. Um, that's probably something we want to change, yeah. um, but uh, right, and here you'll find you, here's here's the the Dal for Pi model that we're wrapping, and it's very you know very similar sort of thing, um, and it's got some example usage, and here's its you know here's its body, right? The actually predict train methods, um, and so yeah, so this is this this is the way you're gonna this is the pattern, right? Um, and if you and like. Uh, Sakshan was saying, if you have a new, so if you're writing some new code that's going to have a new distinct set of dis dependencies, um, then you're going to create a new package. Um, and then it's going to go under, you know, if it's a model, it'll go under model, right? So if you're wrapping some kind of, you know, new, you're, you're providing a model that uses some underlying machine learning library um, that's you know from some library that's Nord. not on this list then you're going to create a new one of these yeah. directories yeah um so so hypothetically if i do decide to do that i'll have to uh, import it in the setup.py file for straight uh yes and that's where so that's so yeah if you if you come here and you're you know you're going to wrap something new this is uh and this is where it is in the new tutorial under packaging it talks about you know you're going to add to this install requires and you're going to add you know whatever you would add in your requirements.txt um and actually i'm going through right now and i'm making it so that we're going to have just requirements Requirements.txt um, because there's multiple ways of doing things. You can do it in setup.py or you can do it in requirements.txt. But people are familiar with requirements.txt, and so we're going to move to doing that. Um, also, there's some scanning tools that have only work on requirements.txt. So now that's just, I have to use those scanning tools. And so we have to move. Um, so yeah, so basically you, you could put it in the install requires or you can put it soon, you'll be able to put it in the requirements.txt. And that's basically just, you know, all your dependencies. And when you do the install of your package, um, it basically says, okay, what's in install requires? Let me say that these are dependencies of whatever this package is um, and it makes sure that they gets in, they get installed when your package gets installed so that when you do import it doesn't say you know module not found Smart. all right any anybody else have any uh, questions or comments on this because I'm thinking this will be a good little clip to upload to YouTube um, or to tag on YouTube as as the way we're structuring this. 
All right, cool. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so anything else? Um, anything else there? Shaw, that you wanted to talk about with regards to the model tutorial? Uh, no. I'm pretty happy with the way things are going till now. So, cool. the ne what, do I, what do I move on to next? Yeah, so what, yeah, what next? Um, so, I would say that if you... Um, so, you said you had some ideas um, about things that you wanted to write as models, right? Yeah. Uh, so basically, I was going through the pre-existing list of models, and mm -hmm. uh, I noticed that uh, we do not have any anomaly detection models still now. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking we could start with that. That sounds great. Yeah. So, um, so uh, actually, I was, this is just this, this is one of the things that I wanted to anomaly detection, and I spelled it wrong. Okay. Um, so, okay. So this is great because uh, one of the next things that I won't, that I think I've 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 heard that we should do is use the. So we've got the, we've got models, we've got sources, and we've got data flows. And so data flows allow us to to edit or generate new data sets. And so one of the things that I've heard was you know a very a common thing that that would be great to sort of include by default is uh, a tutorial on or, or something to do cleaning up of data sets. So basically what we could do is maybe add some the, the, the using the anomaly detection models, we could say, um, you know, throw out anomalous data points and then only use the non-anomalous ones for the data set for training a model. Um, so this would will fit right well into that. Um, so um, what what I guess the first question I ask here, right, like we just talked about directory structures, you know, have you have you done this sort of thing before? And if so, is it something where you use like scikit or something? And if you did use scikit, then the right place for that would be in model slash scikit. Um, does that sound uh, on track? No, or? Uh, yeah. Uh, so basically, I've written this, I've written an implementation of uh, this model before, but this one does not use Scikit. Okay. Yeah. So this is. Does it, what is it used? Pretty is basic it... brown. I think it's just I Python. Think it's something I implemented from scratch. That's yeah, great. Uh, NumPy. Okay. Yeah. NumPy. Okay. So yeah. So so have written an implementation before uh, using just NumPy. So um and. What actually? That's... I'm honestly curious. Like, what what have you used to do it from NumPy? Just NumPy. Yeah. So the uh, the idea behind this this particular model is uh, we use uh, basic probability to like sort of get the we model a bell curve basically, and the points that lie on the extreme ends, we try and see if they they can be classified as anomalies or not. Okay, interesting. So we see if the points that would lie on the extreme ends, we see if what? What was, what was that you said? Uh, yeah, so just let me like try and explain it in a bit more detail. Yeah, so we have like we keep like a threshold value, uh, say 0 0.05, and we try and evaluate the probability distribution of all data points that we have. And if it's beyond that threshold, we say that it's fine, it's, a no, it's not an anomaly. But if it's less than a particular threshold, we say that it's an anomaly. And the distribution we use for this is normally the divergent distribution. So I'll try and get some, I know this doesn't sound very clear and 
uh, that makes sense. Precise right now. That makes sense. I've but I'll try and you're just throwing away things that are really far out of the the standard or the 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 standard set, right? Like if it's yeah. really far away from the edges of the bell curve, you throw it away. Yeah. So okay. to give you like a 2D visualization, if you have like 20 points clustered in a circle and one or two far away points that are far away from the circle, from the circle this algorithm classifies those two points as anomalies. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, let me yeah, let me write that down too. So. Yeah, so some some basic throw out the the non matching data points. So if you have twenty points clustered in a circle and two which are far away from the circle, uh, we classify the two far away ones as anomalies, which I still can't spell. Okay. Okay. Um, I think this sounds. I think this sounds like a great, you know, first first one to first one to do. It get you familiar with. This will get you familiar with the contribution process and and uh, and 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 uh give us give us something that we needed so this is great um so okay um here's here's what you're going to do you're going to basically go through and you're going to um um so number one so this is all right so steps um so create an issue uh talking about what you're going to do um because this lets other people say so we've got and let me see i'll take us to it here but we've got if you go under the contr contributing documentation here um you'll you'll follow this but um it's basically let's see what to work on um this is this is how we're how we sort of organize is basically um there's a bunch of issues out there and people will comment on issues, say that they're working on them. And then you, if you comment on an issue, you need to open a pull request within a certain amount of time, within seven days, so that someone knows that you're actually working on it. And so that they, sh in case they see it, they don't go work on it too, right? Um, and then we keep working on pull requests. And if you don't have any activity on it for t more than 21 days, we'll assume that you abandoned it and you don't have time to tell us what's going on. Um, and we'll assume that someone else should start working on it. Um, and so basically that's, that's what you're going to do for yourself is instead of, you know, picking up an issue and commenting on it, you just create, create your own issue for what you're going to do so that we know you're doing it. Um, and so that, you know, if someone else comes along and decides, you know, hey, I'm going to do an anomaly detection model. They see that, oh, wait, you're already working on that. Let me do something else. Um, so create an issue, talk about what you're going to do. Um, and then, uh, so since you're uh, working, um, since you're only using NumPy, um, you'll want to add to model slash scratch. Um, since that is, and this is, um, poorly named, um, uh, but, wait, are you presenting a screen? Uh, yes. Oh, it stopped presenting. Sorry. It cut me off for some reason. Um, so here, right, we've got model or here's scratch and this is, Right now, it's installed as the package dffml hyphen model hyphen scratch, but really, what it is is models written with NumPy. Um, so it's not um, it's not entirely the best name for it, but you know that's usually what people call it when they write one with just NumPy is from but scratch. You can't see your screen, though. You still can't see my screen. Um, I I can see your screen. Let's see. Wait. Let me try. Oh wait, might be an issue. I'll try representing.
but yeah so basically i mean i'm just talking about under the root of the source tree um uh, the model directory, then, you know, there's the models by different names, and then there's one called Scratch. Um, so you're going to want to work in... Uh, one second. Okay, so you're going to work want to work in model slash Scratch. Um, and can you see now? Uh, yeah. All right. And if you ever can't see, you can... No. Yeah. Oh, no. But it, you can follow along if you open the meeting minutes doc. Um, I'll paste it in here. You can sort of oh, yeah. follow along because I'm just yeah. I'm just typing in there right now. Um, so so yeah, cool, cool, cool. Contains models. So you're going to want to add a model slash scratch, which is poorly named, but contains models that uh, only use NumPy as. Uh, Dependency. All right. Um, okay. Um, and then you'll so you'll write you'll create a new file within DFFML model um, scratch. Um, so model slash model or slash DFFML model scratch. Um, called, you know, called anomaly.py or something. Um, and then you'll write the model, you know, write the model in that file. Um, you know, and sort of use the use the new model tutorial as your guide. And if, if you get stuck anywhere, just ask. Um, and and we'll, we'll come you know, point you, hopefully point you in the right direction. Um, so then make the tests. Um, and finally, uh, add an entry to the model slash scratch slash setup dot py file, um, which is um, uh, add an entry point to the model scratch, scratch slash setup.py. And then after that, uh, you need to write documentation within the model doc string um, so that others know how to use your model. Um, and for an example of that, you can see um, let's see, where's a good one? Um, uh, yeah, actually, the Dalper, Dalper Pi might be good. Um, so you just put it in, and this is one of the things we don't have in a tutorial yet, but we need to, is you put it in the doc string of the model. Um, and so before you get to this, um, before you get to this, stop before you get to this step, because I'm... We're, we're, we're changing the way some of this stuff is getting tested. Um, and right now, the current way that was all getting tested beforehand, or before this, was um, was we hey, were writing separate test cases and stuff. Um, but uh, we've recently introduced some new new testing infrastructure to test these doc strings. Um, and so so once you get, before you get here, pause and then ping, ping, ping me, um, because I'm the one sort of working on that right now. Um, so, uh, All right. is a good example. Uh, before you start writing this, uh, pause and ping PDX Johnny in Gitter. All right. Um, does that sound sound like a good plan? Good. This is this is gonna take me like some time though. Yeah, so yeah, of course. Yeah, don't don't worry about it. No, nobody's on a schedule here, so we're all just we're all just working on this. I'm, I mean, I'm trying to get this thing out. Actually, I'm trying to get this thing out by Friday because my boss is about to ask me what what did you do this month, um, and I'm hoping the answer is make the make the release. Um, so, because my other main deliverable <laughs> sort of got got 
it, it got delayed. So basically, if I don't do say this, then it looks like I haven't done much this month, and I've been I've been working. So <laughs> so I'm really trying to get this uh, this release out this release out by Friday. Um, but other than that, we basically, you know, it's not it's not like we're on any sort of schedule. So if as things get added, what I'm trying, what we're trying to do is I'm trying to get this release out. And then the goal that we were shooting for was basically to do at least once a month, maybe twice a week so that right. It's right now it's been like six months since we did a release. And so that's not great because we just get all this stuff piling up in the Git repo and then it doesn't get out there into the release version. What we really try are going to try to do is basically just, you know, as stuff gets added, it gets released and you know, it sort of just moves forward and, and whenever stuff gets added, people get access to it. Right. Um, so there's no, there's no rush. Um, you know, we're around and you can ask us all any questions you have in Gitter or, you know, in this meeting. So. Sounds good. Cool. Um, do you have any other questions in general here? No. All right. Cool. This is this gave us some good insight into the new model tutorial. All right. Okay. So Yash, um, we have a weird error happening with the tests. Yeah, yeah. I'll share the my screen. All right. Cool. Just a second. And Sakshan, did you want to talk about anything today? Yeah, you wrote uh, a message on Gator like oh, oh, yeah. the so OP source is not working correctly. Yeah. As okay. it should be, I think. Yeah. Op source. Also I just checked uh the new uh, versions for Py Torch and Torch Visions are out like an okay. hour ago. Oh awesome. So I looked at if they have added annotations, which I expect they have. Yeah, I think we saw it in I the can... master branch when we did that. So, yeah, cool. Okay, so And was that for loss functions? Section was that was that was for or or was it for the optimizers? Oh, uh, it was for the optimizers. Okay. All right. Yes, I can see your screen. Sorry. Farm box. I just remembered. Yeah. So I was on mute. I didn't realize. Sorry. No worries. Okay. So I just installed DFFML again. I installed everything except mm -hmm. for AutoSQL Learn and uh, Workful Babbit because they have external dependencies. Right. And when I run Python setup.py test, it never creates. But now it returns this, and I searched for it. I didn't get a solution. Oh, this. Jesus. Um, Python version is 3.8. Okay, um, let's see. Chrome app cannot decode byte in position. Okay, this is a. Uh, this okay. isn't even related to DFFML anywhere, I guess. It's yeah, so, something with Python. So let's see. This is in. Okay, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, it's an encoding issue in the it's nowhere like the call stack has the dffml nowhere yeah okay well so the thing is that it's in c dffml slash test slash console test so this has to do with the um this oh. has to do with the new the new testing of the tutorial so basically what it's trying to do is it's going through and it's reading all of the rst files and it's checking if they have the test if that little colon test colon in them which means that you know there's some 
code block in there that we're going to actually run as a test and then it's going to create unit test test cases for those code blocks uh, or for that for that file um, but in the process it's getting mad that um that the uh that the that the um uh uh, the, it's basically it's having deep co trouble decoding those files. I'm for I'm not sure why, but here's a fix for that. If you edit that the test docs test console test file, um, we can do at the very bottom. Okay, so yeah, so basically here, see, it's basically it's reading all of those restructured text files, and then it's saying, okay, if there's no test in them, then skip. If there is a test in them, then make a unit test out of them. Um, so at, where it says if colon test that string at the top of the oh. for loop, make that yeah. A, yeah, put a b in front of that string literal so that it becomes a binary string. And then change read text to read bytes at the end of that line, and that way it won't try to decode it. Um, so it'll it'll basically just leave it as raw bytes and check for the byte string in there. So, let's see. Does All that right. make sense? What happened there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Sweet. Okay, we've got test cases running now. It was working with Python, like Python setup dot by unit test. So nice. I thought it wasn't related to this. Yeah. Oh, so many tests. Wise. Yeah, I was thinking we need to make sure that we. Uh, I think. Oh yeah, and there should be that one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's the that's 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 my fault. So I still need to go fix that HTTP test stuff. Operation was attempted on something that is not a socket, which doesn't make any damn yeah, sense. We discussed this that Windows does this except yeah. like in a different way. Yeah. So five errors. I was getting twelve errors. Things. Okay, yeah. Well let's see. So that's I mean that's that's good news. Um I think we I think we may have even actually merged some of your changes, which is why <laughs> we're getting less. Um okay, so this is solvable. Like yeah. I know why this is happening. Now. Okay, great. And then the so yeah the HTTP test ones maybe maybe you put a maybe you could just put like a skip if on those for now so that we know that um, so that you know like a unit test skip if uh, platform is Windows because um, okay. that way so you know, and and what do you say like what should I do for test commands like should I write scripts for Windows or uh, it should work or? okay let's see. Um, Console test, test functions, system cannot find the file specified. Okay, yeah, so this one, I'm not sure about this one because so this is, this has to do with, yeah, so this is this is more of the, the testing, the, the doc documentation testing stuff. Um, and all of that, a lot of that stuff uses pipes, Unix pipes heavy, heavily. Um, yeah. So. Um, and so, PowerShell cannot run. Uh, shell script so yeah and PowerShell. most yeah. of them are shell scripts yeah so and i think i think you know i think so yeah i think the first step here is basically going to be to go through and say okay for stuff doing weird stuff with sockets and pipes which is basically the http test stuff and the um the documentation you know running commands that involve pipes which is that one that you're looking at there um i would just do Add, add unit test skip to them so that we know which ones they are and they don't block your you know your your view here of the ones that are not related to that because um, I, okay. I don't know I think that's probably step one here is sort of you know give yourself give yourself a clean view of the of the stuff that's you know that's 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 easily fixable and then go fix that stuff right um, and then we'll sort of do, we'll deal with these more complex cases after after let's enumerate the complex cases and skip them and then deal with you know the other things that are probably like the file stuff that you know how to fix already um does that sound good yeah. this is again weird 
I, I fixed something like this last time, but that's a weird one. Is it because of the flashes? Yeah. Um, for, for the other ones, that sounds good. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Cache download and pack over. Yeah. I um. And then actually, so okay, so after you've done that, um, can you add the base package to the CI as a CI target? Um. Because that will be, you know, that's made. That's one of the key things here. Um, is that we need to we need to get this running within the CI so that we we have a constant view of this. Um, so basically, skip skip the ones like Windows like yeah for Windows. Um, okay. So so yeah, that'll basically be and let me write let me start writing this stuff down here for you. Um, so we're gonna want to do so. Okay. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, I I was saying something. I think. Oh, I didn't hear you anything. Yeah. This. No problem. Continue. Like I'm, I'm listening to you. Well, I don't. Yeah, I don't have anything more to I, say. So go for it. All right. So what you are saying that I should skip all these tests that are creating like that are heavily dependent on pipe stuff mm -hmm. and the HTTP stuff, and run it on CI. Yep. Yeah, and okay, I know how to fix this. I I fixed these kinds of error before, and yeah. I, I don't know why this happens. Like, is well, it because of the slashes? I I think I fixed it. See. The file and directory time. name or volume label syntax is incorrect. Pathload, pathload. Uh, da, 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 um, pathload, R glob. Oh. Maybe it's this here. See the the um, line eight, the one above where you were. Um, so in line eight, line eight in files in DFML commit, it's basically an R glob with a star star slash. Um, I think it's because we have. Um, here, jump back to your. Just you, it's okay if you just look at the, just look at the stack trace. You see in the stack trace it says doc test cache. Yeah. Yeah, that guy, right? It says star star slash star. That may be why. I'm not sure, um, okay. but you know, it's a forward slash there, and uh, it might be mad. Windows is a black guy. Yeah, and so you could use you could use os dot sep, I think it is, or os dot separator there instead. Okay. Um, that might be the fix for that. Um, so let's just see. Um, for cached download, and let me write a note here. Unpack archive. Um, try. Uh, I'm writing a note. OS dot sip. OS dot sip. Let me just make sure this is correct here. OS dot sip. Is this in a temporary file? File then DFML commit. Uh, what? Uh, is this in a temporary file? This is in a temporary file. Yes, um, it's creating. It's it's running the doc test for it. So basically, it extracts the it extracts the lines from the the doc string, and there's a doc test module within Python. That's I believe what's running. Oh, this. okay, okay, I got, I got it. Yeah. Um, yeah, there at the top, the stack trace lib slash doc test dot py. So it's running, it's running this, the doc test for that that function. Um, if, like if you remember, I fixed a very similar error last. Yeah, oh yeah, and it was because of backslashes. I think yeah, I but think I, I do remember. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I'll I'll check on this. Yeah. So. Uh, so. This one we talked about last time, and yeah, and so uh, these couldn't find us. Yeah, so this those. One... Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These ones, I think, yeah, those are all related to HTTP test, which is my um, testing library that I need to go fix for this. So if you can just comment them, or let's see, let me, let me see, what could I do? I think I could. Yeah, I don't want to skip them, but. Uh, I think if you could add if you could add the unit test skips over those tests, that would be like you know there's a unit test dot skip if 
Um, yeah, 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 I know. But... Yeah, so so if you could add that over those tests, um, then we could uh, that that says you know if it's on Windows, then skip it. Um, that's probably okay. the way to go right now because I don't have bandwidth to do that right now. Um, and uh, you know, I want to okay, make so sure just, that I get that. Just a couple of couple of these are related to directories, directory yeah. errors. Rest, all of them are socket. All of them are socket. SDB. Yeah. So if we just go skip those, then basically, yeah, then we're just you know we'll basically when we run the tests, all the ones that are skipped on Windows will be our list of things that we need to go go fix that are it, socket related. It has skipped seven. It has these skipped might be seven. Related to the pack. Yeah. Oh, these those are. I think those are related to the, yeah the packages like you're saying. So that's related to the re the required plugins thing where it skips so it if it's not installed. I... Okay, okay. It Hopefully should be. I think. Well, so the thing is, yeah, I don't know. Scroll back up through, but let's see. We have a lot of tests. Um, this is all one test here. No oh, skip. Oh, run console tests. Oh, those are all. So those are all the documentation tests that are being skipped right there. So okay. Yeah, test test tutorials, model iris, test tutorials, data flow oh. IO. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I forgot I added so that. We are not because... running the plugin tests here. Uh so if you if they're okay, so everything is getting run I think if those if the run console tests if if the console tests are the only thing that are being skipped right now, then you have I think you have you must have like scikit installed and stuff um but yes, you can do I if you do dffml them. version it'll tell you uh just uh version without the hyphen hyphen oh. yeah okay there you go i don't have these yeah so you don't have those guys but i don't think any of the the integration tests use those so i think yeah okay. i think it's running everything else all right. Yeah. OK, so well, this I, is good. I, if, I mean, if, it installed most things. It, yeah. In these, this will get, these will get installed once I install those dependencies. Yeah, yeah. The rest, there wasn't any issue. I yeah. Faced. I guess it was just the pip version that was causing the problem. I downgraded pip a version. Oh, you downgraded? And then it was okay. downgraded and then upgraded. Oh, OK. I don't know what was <laughs> Oh God, yeah, it's a mess. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I think there. Were, whoa, oh, there was one thing I wanted to say is that I changed. I recently changed the service dev install command. We previously had it so that remember we had gone through some discussion about, um, you know, if it fails to install a package, then it's hard to see which package you know it failed to install. So we started installing each package one by one. Um, I was running on various different systems and I found that, um, you know, that new feature flag. The, so when you do pip install use feature 2020 resolver that it has been yelling about recently, um, there's been a lot of discussion on an issue thread under the pip um, repo, basically, and it has to do with all of these machine learning packages and how they have different conflicts with versions with each other. And uh, essentially, you know, the we we definitely hit this issue because this is, you know, exactly what we're doing here is we're trying to make a bunch of different machine learning packages work together. Um, and uh, and so um, basically, I, I changed the service dev install command so that it um, so that it installs all the packages all at once um, because that that flag doesn't work correctly and it won't resolve all the packages unless it knows what all of them are at the same time during the same install command. Um, it was installing the wrong versions of things and then blowing up. Um, and then at the end, I basically tried to import each one of the packages and I threw an exception. Um, if the, I, 
we, we throw an exception if you can't import the package. So it should still tell you which ones failed to install, um, but it should, um, but it will correctly install everything using that new resolver thing. Um, and I think it speeds it up um, too. So anyways, just so if you notice any changes or experience any problems with that, then then tell everybody um, so that we can figure that out. But I think as far as I could tell, like, so if it's not, if it, if you try to install stuff in that, that it, it, it doesn't um, tell you which package failed, then, you know, let me know and let us all know. Um, because I, I don't know if I thoroughly tested that enough because I didn't have any packages that failed to install. Have um, you updated it already? I don't know if I have updated it already. It may be in my working tree. I'm working. I, have, I let's see. I, I just pulled master and rebased it and then installed EFFML again. Yeah. This evening. Okay, let's see. Um so what the the changes you made won't fail the packages that are all that are installed. Or like if one fails then other fails. This issue was fixed, right? Um okay, wait here. It is, I think. Um if one fails okay, it's this change here. Let's see, and I don't know if this is in there. Okay, no. Um... You aren't sharing your screen. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Okay. Uh, sorry. All right. Um... All right. Yeah, it should be in there. Okay, yeah, it should be in master. It looks like it's it's here, um, and here's master. So it should be in master. Um, it's this commit r dash p. Um, basically, what I did here is I I you know we were running it once per, and then I instead just ran it once, and then I went through and I did invalidate caches, and I said so basically if expect things have changed from an importing perspective and then try to import or try to try, see if you can import this package name. Um, and if you can't, if you can't find the module, then append it to the list of failed packages. Um, so, oh, okay. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I have another meeting coming up here in a second. Um, I'm technically right now, but so let me just, um, okay. So yeah, you're going to go through and you're going to, do you're you're clear on next you 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 feel like you've got a yeah, 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 action yeah, yeah. here okay um yeah. uh, try to run tests in ci um so sakshan you're going to do the new versions of pytorch and pyvision um for the annotations oh and we want to talk about op source not working as it should be all right so Okay, so just real quick here, because I have to run um, the uh, source. Okay, so with OpSource, what it does right now is it takes an operation implementation. Let me make it bigger here. So it takes an operation implementation and then it takes the arguments. Now, okay, when we A enter, we, let's see. Yeah, we basically just pass the arguments to the data flow. Yeah, we basically add the arguments to the data flow. We run the data flow with this single value and then we grab the outputs using um, the get single operation. Um, so, and then let's see, what do we do? Oh yeah, we just turn all the results into records. So we take the dictionary of results and we turn it into records. Um, uh, so I wanted to ask that, can we just create a data flow with where, the, where first we'll have directory source and then we'll have a function, a custom function, and then the model, and then another custom function to change it back to NumPy to display the, uh, the colored image. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, yes, you could use the data flow for that. Yeah. 
Um, and in that case, be better. Mm -hmm. What and, do you have to say about that? Yeah, I mean, I think if you want to do that, I think it's uh, the logical thing to do here is to create some operations that just kind of like how we have model predict, um, you know, maybe create some operations around sources. Um, so, and you can do it, you know, we have the we have the ability right now, so you can basically just write up, you know, you write your Python file and then you just, you can reference it with, you know, the file name colon the function, right? So you don't even have to formally register these until you've got, you know, it down to what you want it to be. Um, do you know what I'm talking about there? Uh, no, I didn't get that. Okay, so um, I think we've got an example with the op source. Um, like, can we use the data flow commands? Yeah, I would just, uh, so yeah, I would say um, use, yeah, use the data flow commands and try to do this with data flows and operations. And if you get stuck anywhere, just let me know. Okay, so I just wanted to ask that uh, you were just saying that we can use custom uh, functions here as well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, well, you, right, because you could just write a new function to be whatever operation you needed, right? Okay, so is there an example in the documentation? Um, let's see. That? Maybe there's, let's see, Agen's got some, the Gitter stuff here has some operations. Um, I don't know if he registers these. Let's see, does he register them or not? Okay, yes, okay, so this is an example here. Um, let's see. So, could I use data flow instead? Um, so, so, if you look at this example, basically he writes this file operations.py and he puts some operations in the file and then when he runs the data flow create command and the data flow run command he basically just says operations colon the operation name within the file um, and that way he doesn't have to create a new plugin or and register them as entry points and stuff okay okay so um, i think that it, this will make do i for, for now i guess yeah and i will we'll look figure at out this. yeah We'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we figure out the, the best way to do it, you know, from there. Um, okay, yeah. okay. All right, cool. Thanks, everyone. Sorry I have to run right now. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to just, if there's anything else, try to ping me on Gitter and, and we'll figure it out. So, or next week. So, all right, cool. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.